huge on the table. By the way, Sarks, if you're running and tripping over my bag, we're going to the hospital and we do the podcast in the car. That'd be great. Well, yeah, that's fine. No, we're gonna we're, once you hit record, you can't stop. Like we're we're gonna do the podcast <laughs> we'll take the while camera you're off on the tripod. The floor and cry. Yeah. yeah, I mean we're gonna we're gonna float the camera to your face while you're, while you're crying and bleeding. <laughs> so why are you crying so? <laughs> it's gonna go in your dream. <laughs> I think the last time it was an all guys pie podcast, Sebastian was on the table as well, right? Yeah. No. You gotta have some pussy on the table. Hey yo. Hey. Oh, all right. I uh, <laughs> I was I guess I'll start. Hey everybody, welcome to the BRB Podcast episode of Who Fuck Knows. <laughs> ten. I just named it on the on the file. Oh, is it ten? Oh, Alright. Uh, I'm Eric. Oh, I'm I'm Jim. And I'm Jim. Wow, that's like the quietest I've ever heard you. <laughs> I was like mid call. I is. could get loud. I'm Jim. There it He's is. Like, <laughs> and that's I'm, the voluminous jam and I'm that Jim. I know and love. I do ASMR now. Jim, so this Dude. is this is my new NPR voice. I've been practicing it for you. He's like you ever notice that the NPR guys sound like they just have a big wad of spit in their mouth like at all times. Well, so, yeah. sometimes, uh, uh, like the sometimes worst thing. that happens, and it's just like whoever is producing this needs to interrupt right now and tell them to drink water. Would you like a cotton swab? It drives <laughs> me Steve Inskeep over there. I am I'm Steve Inskeep. Like, oh, stop it, dude! Come on. I'm eating enchiladas. Yeah, so anyway, that really hits our target audience. Yeah, talking about NPR. Here we go. So, what have you guys been up to? Uh, not getting, uh, not getting myself completely and totally injured like you. Yeah, well. <laughs> so, if your friends say play sports and you're not athletic, don't play sports. Or you know, start on small is, sports. Is, okay, Move so, up to the weird stuff. So, after. to to give the story, uh, there he is. I was actually there. Eric. Actually, yeah, Eric in his in his bright, shiny new PT gear that he got. Uh, it was six, civilian six years ago because he never goes to PT and he never works out and he just basically sits there and like edits video and plays video games. I uh, he goes to to PT for like the first time with with our work group uh, in like. How long was the last time? Maybe like a year ago? I go to PT every week. Yeah, he goes uh, to PT once, probably once a year. And he shows up and he's got he's still got the creases on his shirt from having never worn it before. And he's like, hi guys, what are we doing? And they're all like, oh, we're taking it easy today. We're going to play volleyball. Volleyball is basically like... Okay, first of all... <laughs> it's basically the easiest thing you can do. It's, it's volleyball. No. In a, in a so the real story goes like this. Mm-hmm. It was two Air Force dudes who have nothing better to do than hang out on the beach all the time because what does the Air Force do? And then four Navy dudes. So people who are in shape. And, and so they're like, yo, we'll take all the Navy on. And we're like, Psh, yeah, let's do this. They kicked our ass. So we're getting destroyed. Yeah. That's and then right. Jam's like, <laughs> I'm not going to stand for this. So like they spike the ball and Jam just like takes it right to the face and flicks the ball back with his nose. Scores the point and is like, and blood just starts gushing out of yeah, his nose. I didn't realize that blood was gushing out of my nose, and I like. I didn't hear about this part. Yeah, yeah. When when, awesome. when I when I start like sports screaming because I like get into it, especially in echoey rooms. I don't know if you know this. I like being loud. Um, but when I get into it, I just I start saying whatever, right? And so I'm bleeding out of my nose, and I'm pretty sure like I said something along the lines of "fuck you, you got nothing," and I'm just like bleeding and like squirting everywhere, and just like dripping on I the ground. Looked, I bet it looked fearsome. Oh yeah, it looked just it looked like fearsome. totally badass. And of course, you know, like the guy that I was yelling at is a full like three feet taller than me, and but just was, like looking at me like. But really he was confused. terrified. Yeah, he was really scared because apparently in the Air Force. No, let's like not go that. there. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so he was terrified. So, anyways, we get the situation under control, <laughs> and so then it's like we're we're making a comeback. We're doing good, and I'm like, yo, we got to win this. Like for some reason, I want to represent today. And the ball the comes at me, and I'm fired. like, I saw it perfectly. It was chance. up there, and I was like, yo, I can get a two-foot vertical, smack that back at him. This was, like, this, like, this was the scene from Top Gun. I was like, Maverick. with the boys. Right. And like, <laughs> I was Maverick. I saw Iceman across at me, and I'm like, I'm going to destroy this guy. Mm-hmm. And so I go up. I hit I it back. for more of an Iceman. What? <laughs> well, no, because, yeah. So I hit it, and it goes across, and it's like, I get the point, and I'm like, eh, and I'm coming down. And all of a sudden, my ankle just starts bending this way. It's because you have, like, your your bones are made of glass. <laughs> and I'm They're like, old man and it was like, oh, no. And, <laughs> he, and he, starts, he starts laughing. Like, and at first, so, so like, I see him fall, and I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, Eric that's the fell. Reaction. And he starts laughing, and I'm like, oh, okay, no, he's good. And then I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not normal laughing. Like that's that's like I am trying so hard not to cry right now. Like, like, <laughs> well, it's like a, ha, 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 ha. 
it's like, okay, so let's go ahead and... <laughs> but it, I was man crying, which is laughing. Your, yeah. your, by the way, your microphone volume is is very low, and I guarantee you, you're topping that Still, thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, look, this is like monster number six for me today. I feel like there's a reason. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. I'm a little loud. <laughs> So yeah. Uh, <laughs> so long story. I heard your foot was like like if this is a normal foot, it was like this basically. Like it was. Yeah, because... like it did the whole ninety degree thing. That's cool. Yeah. So um, luckily, I realized what was happening, gave up my weight instead of fighting it, Dude. and I only chipped off a part of the bone, and That's it's good. really bad sprain. So, so I limp around now. Did you take a picture of the dis, like the dislodged foot? No, but I had a picture of it in uh, Vegas because we were moving around a lot, nice and, and I saw that, yeah. and it was. But ugh. that's not as good as like I honestly, if that happened to me, the first thing would be like, "Holy shit, somebody like fix this!" But then while you're fixing it, one of the bystanders, please take a photo, so because I need a picture of my so, foot so, out of its place. So <laughs> most injuries, I mean, that one it didn't like it went right back because I didn't snap anything. Okay, it just chipped off. You weren't like you weren't like uh, with yeah. Silva with his, with his no. leg flying all around. But what's funny is I put on uh, it was peanut butter day, so we wore the mm. dress shoes. So I wear that, and so like I'm limping around at work for like three hours, and I'm like, yeah, this isn't good. I got to go to the doctor's. He takes me to the doctor's, and I lift up my my le- like my pant leg to look at it. He lifted up and his I, skirt, and I shit you not, it was <laughs> yes. like you see my shoe with my foot and like a tennis ball sitting on top. Yeah. He, Where my ankle's supposed that, to be. That day good. he had cankles that would make Bill Clinton proud. Ooh. Yeah. He had some good ass cankles. Great cankles. <laughs> you know, you know who likes laughing. cankles? John Madden. John Madden likes Ugh. cankles. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big cankle so, guy. No, you they, know, they, they actually, they call me the ambulance now. Or you, one, one person has called me the ambulance. They, like so twice. by they, yeah. Because, because. I mean, behind your back, they call you way worse. I'm right? sure. So. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take the ambulance. <laughs> so I, but yeah, I took him to the hospital, and then like earlier that week, I took somebody else to the hospital. Like, yeah. and that was just sort of. My thing, I guess, that week. He looks out for people. He's yeah, a good guy. Yeah. Fuck as you. it turns out, as it turns out, you know, Jim's a, Jim's a nice kid. But uh, you know, that's like, why we like him. To 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 meter that out, I also gave everybody uh, secondhand cancer because I was just <laughs> I, I rolled up their windows and was just chain smoking the entire way there. So I mean, yeah, that's fair. I have to. It has to you be can, balanced. You can you can roll the windows. It's not been that cold. You can just roll those down. Oh, speaking of cold, he takes me to Vegas, right? <laughs> and so we're in Vegas for a few days, and it's the desert. It's gonna mm-hmm. be warm. 70 degrees here the whole time we left, apparently, in Maryland, yeah, for reference. Great. It was awesome. It was 30 degrees. Yeah. Hilarious. It was cold as hell. Did, in the freaking desert. What, what'd you guys do? Well, it's at night it's supposed to be, but yeah. No, what, not during the day. Yeah, right. Uh, so what'd you guys do in Vegas? I mean, obviously you shot a you shot a thing. Who cares? Like, what did you do in Vegas? I shot a thing. You didn't, some food. You didn't hang out, like, on the strip and do... They didn't want to. Shit. But uh, we got really drunk the last night, me and... Uh, our other buddy, and we decided at like three in the morning, let's stumble down and go to the poker table. Yeah. And he is talking a big game, and he like won the first hand, and he's like, ha, ha, ha. Starts throwing chips around. And like, I had a good hand, and I was like, yeah, and I bet. And he like called my bet and went all in. I was like, you shouldn't do this. <laughs> like, I don't want to take all your money. Right and away. I was like, I want to play a little more first and I was like, before okay. I take all your money. And then it's like, I won and took all his money. But the best part is I felt bad because, you know, you're hanging out with someone you don't want to sit like, oh, I'm going to play poker. So I did a few more and I was like, oh, I don't want to be the douche. I'll at least do my blinds. So I didn't want to get up. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's my last set. Go through. And I'm not I'm like so like kind of wasted. I'm like, oh, I got three, four. And there's like a five and a six. I'm like, oh, I, th- I have a pair. I think I, I win. I think and, I have something. And so I'm like betting. And the one guy's like, call, call. And, and then we like start checking at the end. I'm like, I don't know what I got. Check, check. And we're just, <laughs> just like dr- drunk and autopilot. Uh, he's just, and, then, and then flip it over, and he's like, pocket queens. I was like, shit, I got fours. And the dealer's like, he's got a straight. And I'm like, I do? <laughs> yeah! <Awesome! laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, boys, I'm getting up. As it turns Vegas, out I accidentally turned into James Bond when I was drunk. <laughs> Vegas absolutely loves a drunk man. Oh, like, it that's, does. It it's, does. That's, that's how I love a drunk. Statement. So... Uh, they have this really good whiskey bar there. So the first night we go to uh, just this hall whiskey bar, and it's like you you know how you go to uh, beer pubs, not beer pubs, what are they called? Breweries. Mm-hmm. And they have like six beers, and you're like, oh, I want to try them all, so they bring you out like a yeah, nice little, a little thing. Flight. Yeah, so you got a flight of whiskey? You can do a flight of whiskey. Ooh, buddy. But it's supposed to be like a quarter pour. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. I mean, this expensive ass whiskey, you're not going to give you a shot. And also, if you're getting like 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 four shots all at once, that's that's less 
a flight of whiskey, more just like an alcoholic's platter. <laughs> so, which I'm fine with. Ooh, what is so alcohol the, with the first, the first flight comes out. <laughs> right here. Now, it took granted, two. <laughs> we've had a few drinks at this point, and uh, uh, the first flight comes out, and these are half pours, which mm. I'm not going to complain about. But yeah. so I, I, we have our thing, and it's like good. I was like, oh yeah, I'm like, oh, you got to go to your thing, right? And he's like, yeah, we'll do one more flight, try some more whiskey. I was like, I don't care, let's try different whiskeys. So the next flight comes out, and the lady's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what the bartender's doing. These aren't supposed to be this big, but here you go. And it was like three full shots of whiskey. Whoever said, I'm sorry, I gave you too much whiskey. <laughs> Those words don't work. <laughs> they just don't make sense. So these are like $12 shots, like $15 shots of whiskey that I only paid $18 total for like all three. So, you know, $45 value for 18 bucks, And I'm just like, shh. All right. I'd like to. Th- were you? You were sipping these. Yeah, yeah. I were, sipped them. Yeah, 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 but, I sipped uh, but them I'm very, saying very quickly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Another flight them. before that bartender leaves. <laughs> no. So. Yeah, get your money <laughs> so I got really shit faced really quick, not intending to, and you also didn't eat food. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, but that's when I learned the greatness of Vegas because I was upstairs talking to Ashley and I was like, oh, I want food. So I like stumbled down. Everything's in the casino. So I, I, I find this pizza place. And I'm just like going everywhere. I'm like, oh, man, everyone's like, I'm drunk. And then I was like, wait. Yeah. I like looked around and I was like, everyone's everybody's drunk. drunk. <laughs> this place is awesome. <laughs> Did you see the guys out there going, cut, 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 with the hooker cards? Yeah. I love the hooker card guys. They're so cool. So <laughs> actually, so, so I, I grew up in Vegas, as mm-hmm. you know. Um, and uh, we used to go out and collect all the hooker cards we can and then like try and like make a game out of them because like they they have like some of them they have like little like stars covering the nips you know tasteful if you get like actual boobs it's like tasteful those are the the great ones yeah those those are like there's like there's a there's a like a a J.J. Abrams lens flare over the nipples you're like (laughs) that's exactly what it is so uh, essentially we like devised a system to where we could make like a Magic the Gathering style game out of these hooker guards Right, <laughs> it was so fun. So there, there's two things in Vegas that I, I found interesting. The first one is the fact that casinos are becoming digital, which is I think kind of mm-hmm. ruins it for me. Like I like video games, but like you know the idea of sitting at a table. Are we boring you? <laughs> <laughs> you you're sitting at a table, like craps, mm-hmm. whatever. But now it's like everyone's just sitting there. There's like an automated machine doing the roulette, blackjack. Like half of the casino has been replaced by like digital versions. Yeah. It's not just slot machines anymore. Yeah. And it's like, well, that sucks. Like, I mean, I would, that is true. Like, I would like to see the wheel turn and see the, you know, even though I, I don't play roulette because it's just like, ugh, I don't want to do but that. But like, like a solo machine playing blackjack, mm-hmm. okay, you, you're antisocial. But the four of us sitting at a table, like, and it's just like a, a screen, we're at each at a table, and it's There's like. not even a dealer? Yeah, anymore? but it's like a digital dealer, like dealing to. On that the, sucks too, because like a lot of those locals, they, they get their money, right? Right. Sure, like a lot of them get their money off of, off of being Tips, dealers yeah. and shit oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. So if you're just. And you could re- probably replace every single one of those dealers with a, with well, a computer. It's the, not, not that hard. The, I'm sure the, the plans are in the works right now. The really big industry over there is the uh, hotel services industry. Uh, yeah, I thought you were going to say prostitution. Well, so that's Parang. That's a little further north. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Hotel services. Yeah. Hotel services. Yeah, wait. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you got to go. You <laughs> so the second thing I learned, I know how when you've made it, you have your own slot machine. Mm-hmm. Ellen DeGeneres has her own slot machine there. Which was oh, creepy yeah. as hell to see. Uh, yeah. What did I see? I took I took Isabel to the, to the casino for the first time. She has never been to a casino before, and... I thought either she's going to, because she's compulsive enough where she would either like just go crazy. <laughs> Bet it all! <laughs> and just be like, I love gambling now! <laughs> or I knew, or she's logical enough as, as at, right. in, on the same token where she would just be like, we're just spending money and we're not getting, what are we doing here, you guys? Luckily, she was the latter of those two. <clears throat> but yeah, you're right. Like there was a, a Big Bang Theory one. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, uh, that one was there. There's like Orange is the New Black. Why is there a big... Oh, uh, they didn't have that one. Who else? There was a Guy Fieri one. Oh, my <laughs> <Lord>. Flavor Town. <laughs> yeah, like what the fuck is the point I, of that? I, I would almost guarantee like one of the little like symbols on the more. roller said Flavor Town. Um, oh, I'm sure it yeah, did. He had yeah. one that was his fucking car. He, he that son of a bitch... Guy Fieri. <laughs> All right, let's let's talk about this now. Let's move on to Guy Fieri. He uh, he was on Hot Ones, and he says that he never said Flavor Town. That son of a bitch. He lies. He says he never said Flavor Town. It's true. He says it all the time. He said that he's never said it on Hot Ones. So under they, what under, is he under the like, oath of Hot Wings. 
Two shot Evans. <laughs> he says it all the time. <laughs> so, so are they saying that they ran some kind of like deep fake like algorithm I have no on idea. to like get him to say? I have no idea. He's like, I never said that. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Oh, <laughs> Fuck geez. you guys, Gary. I hate you more now. <laughs> um, And then I uh, missed out on winning $3,600. Oh, okay. So I had this idea. If you're going to go gamble, don't go and bleed away your, your money. That's mm-hmm. just not fun. So just pick your game, whatever it is. Go find the table where you can. Cheap, cheap thrill. And just like throw a hundred bucks down. Like, that's doing it. And if you win, you win. If you lose, go drink it away. Whatever. Cool. So I, I like told him, like, I want to go to the roulette table. I just want to go throw a hundred down and win. So it just got done with the whiskey flight. So I'm like stumbling drunk. And we walk by this these group of guys who just like cheer because they won. And they're all like like being like tinfoil hat about it. And they're like, oh, let's go nine. Let's nine. And I look at the guy I'm with and I'm like, they should have went 22 block. And we like sit there, and it like spins, and he's like twenty two black, and I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> That's a one in I don't know how many in, chance for that. One to in thirty eight, technically, yeah. but that's pretty crazy. And I was like, Frick. "You know, I've gone to the casino so many times, and I, I don't I don't go often. Uh, I actually haven't been since I've been in the Navy, except for last time. Um, but like I, when I lived in St. Louis, I would go every now and then just to just to go, you know. And I, I usually just either sat and played blackjack or like." Or like sat at the at the um, slot machines and just pissed away my money, and I, I actually like that better because I would always lose, no matter what. Every one hundred percent of the time, I, w- I would lose. So if you go and you just play roulette and just put it all on black, fifty percent chance of doubling your money. And then you can just go and drink for the rest of the night. Yeah. You know what I've I've almost never had a bad time doing. He's just going and drinking for the rest of the night. <laughs> but, okay, so... <laughs> it's like, why but, not just do that? <laughs> but whatever odds you want to play, it, it's just what you said. Like, we're either going to win uh-huh. and drinks are on you tonight. Or you're going to lose. Or we're going to lose and we're just going to go be like, ah, we're fucking I just stupid. Get the chore out of the way. Yeah. I'm kind of into that. But the, so many people just love the... So I told you, I took I took Izzy to the casino for the first time. Mm. And on the way back, we were, you know, we, we were like, all right, we're going to go and we're going to lose 50 bucks each. We ended up losing, I think, 50 bucks total. Because we were like, <laughs> um, careful, careful. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, on the way back, we were with the we were talking to the Uber driver, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, I don't really like gambling. Like people lose so much money. I see it all the time." Like we're like, "Wow, that's crazy. Like tell me what happens." You know, and he told us about, you know, one guy lost this, one guy lost that, and then he starts going. I mean, I could go every now and then. I mean, I was there last week, and then, <laughs> and then he starts going. I mean, like I don't have a problem or anything. Like, I play poker a lot. So what I do is I go to blackjack first, and I make money there. Then I go to poker, and he's <laughs> and then he's talking. But but my new game is backrack. Okay, so here's how you play backrack. And he st- the the cab ride starts out as like I don't like to gamble. It's bad too. I have a serious gambling <laughs> addiction. This is like in the 15 minute ride. Home. Oh man! I, I really want to follow this guy with a camera. Just that, see that, that's like you sitting down and like someone pops a bottle of wine. And you're like, y'all, I'm not really into drinking and I don't stuff. Even like drinking. And then it's like you like pull I out quit. a six pack. You're like, you know, I like to have a beer every now and then. And then like all of a sudden, you like pulls There's out. There's a, a flight bottle. of whiskey in front yeah. of me. Just, you know, just yeah, ease exactly. the tension a little bit. Sometimes you just have to drink your demons away. That was a that was a fun trip though. <laughs> Overall, I, I do like the Vegas. I I don't know. For me, have you been to Vegas? But I went once. I actually didn't gamble when I went though, because I didn't have a lot of money and I just wanted to drink. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> it's, it's not that impressive to me. Yeah, Las Vegas is a lie. I, I, I told you that when, <laughs> when the plane landed. It, it's the, the it's strip, a big lie. Yeah. The, the strip is like this very contained small thing. The rest of Vegas is like the most boring adobe hut. I would it's tell you desert to, it's, yeah. I would it's tell you to waste fun. your money and go to somewhere like New York because New York has just got endless amounts of culture yeah. and things to do that like I've never had a bad time in New York. Yeah. Every, every time I've gone to New York, here's here's what's happened. I've been walking down the street, talking to strangers, and I ended up in some random place watching the best music I've ever seen. I've been three times, and that's happened every single time. Damn. Uh, I, to to I mean, you. New York is <clears throat> such like culture on top of culture on top of culture just like everything stacked on Mm -hmm. itself it's great that like you could never find all the greatness in it and it's just like like you said every time it's just a new pocket last time last time i was there it was on new year's Eve. no it was no it was christmas eve um we went to a me and isabel went to it like we're like oh yeah there's like an like an all all night like all you can drink party we went to that we realized who goes to parties on christmas eve uh but the jews so we hung out. We were like partying. <laughs> we were partying with the Jews on Christmas Eve. It was awesome, having a great time. And then like, okay, when you refer to that, because you're referring to a group. Yeah, the Jewish people. Not like, like I said, yeah. I'm having a good time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was great. They were like up on on the table, like doing the dance and everything, and like 
It was like club music. <laughs> You're like dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. <laughs> but they were doing it for like club music. It was so cool. We were like doing like the oh, it was so fun. But then like it, it went like it was, it was like an all you can drink for for the cover. But then that exp- it was like little tiny fine print like expires at eleven thirty. So we got our drinks in and then we were like, all right, I'm not paying seventeen dollars for a for a rum and coke. That's stupid. Yeah. So we were like, all right, let's just go. We'll just find another bar. It's fine. So we're walking down the street and there's this this uh this old dude in a in like a like a uh, woolen trench coat kind of thing, you know, look real classy and he's and he's lugging a like a double bass behind him, right? And I was like, this guy looks cool. So I just started talking to him, like smoking a cigarette, talking to the guy, and he's like he's like, Yeah, you know, I used to be in the Air Force and whatever, yada yada. I was like, Oh cool, man, I'm in the Navy. I was like, Where are you playing tonight? He's like, Oh, there's this little little place down the street and he goes, Uh, you guys wanna go? I'm like, yeah, I do. That sounds awesome. And he's like, all right, come with me. And, and he got us in. Cover for this place was like 20 bucks a head. It was this real classy swing joint. And it was like, it was this whole big band setup. He was playing bass for him. Mm-hmm. He got us a table right by the goddamn stage. What? And we were the most underdressed people there. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were just like. I you imagine know. Izzy was dressed decent. Oh, yeah. You actually, were, I you will were say, you're right. Because you were dressed. Because she is always dressed classy. Yeah. I was probably wearing this shirt and these jeans. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, Puck out! <laughs> I was like, yeah. But I was having a blast. It was great. There was this, this uh, lady uh, sitting at the table, like, adjacent to us, just, like, giving me the stink eye the whole time for, like, you know, speaking in the manner that I do. You're like, mm, who do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know the bass player. Shut the fuck up, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> Have you been to New York? Yeah. Uh, when I went, I mean, do you guys want to hear my tale of woe? In New I mean, York? we're I on a love, podcast where you're supposed to, to tell a story. Of okay. It's an anecdotal, like, product. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. So, um, entertain the people. <laughs> all right. Uh, I do have to get into a little bit in, into the, the Navy job, which, I mean, you guys already know, though. Uh, but we, we, we do photography and uh, videography for the Navy. I know. It's boring. Uh, but we got this story that I thought was going to be just dynamite. Absolutely awesome. Oh, you gotta love it. It's gonna it's be a great, kid. Kid. <laughs> It's gonna be a big break. You gotta keep going, Rob. Um, so <laughs> this is the first. This is when I met you. Okay, keep going. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. So, um, so this this girl that plays piano to help with her PTSD. She's I a heard former about this, Navy yeah. vet. Yeah, I'm gonna tell a story anyways. Uh, she's a former Navy vet um, that plays piano to help with her PTSD, and she is getting to play Carnegie. Fucking hall. I wanted to go on this job. <laughs> it was like, wow, this is so. Be glad you didn't. Go on this I job. heard about it. Um, so, anyways, we 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 get to New York, and like I had been talking with her on Facebook, and everything seemed cool. Like, oh, it's all great. We get there, and she is a toad person. First off, <laughs> like, it's, there's no easy way to say that. She's just like, what the fuck? Like, what wait, sewer wait. drain did you grow yeah. up? Wait, hold on, hold on. A toad person. <laughs> a go to- on. What does person. that mean? Um. Okay, not so, photographable or <laughs> yeah okay so like you know how sometimes if I'm like doing like this like I got the thing yeah just imagine that all the time like 24 <laughs> 7 it looks like her chin just touches her sternum I hope like, she sees this and just oh uh, she oh god just letter bombs you uh, just whatever. sends you a letter bomb whatever <laughs> so and, and then thing two that I find out <laughs> And I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna get too much into uh, the, the the politics of it, but her politics were wrong. I mean, if there if there was a politics, so she's loud about her politics. She's and, very loud about okay. her politics, and she's very. Let's not, let's not talk about that. Yeah, further. we're not gonna talk. Okay. We're not gonna get any further than that. But let's just say that she's it was wrong, and New York was the exact wrong town to be loud okay. about your wrong politics. Continue. Um. Also, she can't hold a conversation to save her life can't be done and uh and the entire time she, she's like really like afraid of like how dirty things are and she's like like one of those people that like for whatever reason thinks she can get hiv by touching a doorknob so she's generally ignorant and insufferable yeah got just it. real bad got it continue um and so anyways we're like okay whatever like we can we can fix all this in post and make it look great <laughs> we can, we can fix this in we're post. Gonna fix a little a little three-point lighting won't fix yeah, it's, it's gonna be okay <laughs> And so the big day comes, mm-hmm. and we're like, "Are you excited? Let's let's do this thing." You know, like I got backstage access at Carnegie Hall, and you know, found out that she's playing in one of the annexes. But you know, that's okay. I'm alright with it. Still Carnegie Hall. Yeah, still still Carnegie fucking Hall, right? Mm-hmm. That's where the greats play. So we meet up with her. She was one of the greats, right? Um, no. <laughs> we meet up with her, and she is in a bright pink prom dress. I shit you not, a bright, Saw the photos. <laughs> bright pink prom dress. Oh god. <laughs> and then, like, so so apparently. You don't actually have to audition to play Carnegie Hall. All you have to do is pay him two grand. 
and then you get like 70% of each ticket head. <clears throat> that, 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 Ticket price, whatever. Credit Go Hall has the, has the same policy as a shitty dive bar that got shut down in my hometown for serving minors. I, I want to point that out. Yeah. <laughs> so go on. So, anyways, um, we we get in we get into the back and we're set up early and you know we're, we're set up before she walks out and we're like, okay, there's like twelve people in this entire auditorium, twelve and this big you know. Place. Mm-hmm. She comes out, starts playing the worst piano music I think I've ever heard. Like, it's period. Like, 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 smashing her fists on the thing. Like, it was. So she's trolling bum, 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 It bum, was bum. rough. Six of the twelve people got up and left, and left in the middle of her freaking. Oh, they asked for their money so back, good. which, by the way, <laughs> lasted for two hours. Oh. I'm what, those, so was she serious? Like, did she think she could play, or was no, she just yeah, no, trolling? she was completely delusional. <laughs> this woman. <clears throat> what is what is the there's so there's a term for that where you like Munchausen's. Yeah, when you when you have like you think you're good at a skill, but it's because you know nothing about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she was she like a sufferer of that whole situation? <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing. I, I don't know enough about the. So wait, so you're similar. telling me your experience in New York is not good? <laughs> no, my experience in New York was. Absolutely. Okay, well, horrible. we need to give you a better experience in New York. Yeah. yeah. No, so, I, please, th- teach me the we, ways we of We need New to York. get rid of that strike on the other channel and <laughs> <laughs> go back to New York. We're working on it. Which is my fault. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, it's, it was... It these happens. Things, these things are bound to happen in the in the space. <clears throat> Just happened at a really unfortunate time. Really unfortunate. Yeah, well... Okay, yeah. New York is a lot better than that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what... But you want to know what's funny? She could be amazing. Because do you have you seen uh, comedians get coffee? Comedians in cars getting coffee with with uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, never seen it. No, I've seen it. I've seen like every episode. Uh, the one with uh, John Oliver. John Oliver. Mm-hmm. He has that story where he's like, "Yeah, I did stand up," and he's like, he was in a place and he was doing his stand up, and he said every single person got up and walked away, and he goes, "There's like one last girl," and she's like, "Oh." And she gets up and he's like, oh, you're going to leave? She's like, yeah. <laughs> and then like the last person leaves and the guy that's doing audio, he's like, are you going to continue? <laughs> <laughs> he's just here for practice at and this he's point. Like, he's like, no, I'm done. <laughs> oh, Fucking man. done. Yeah, I, I remember that one. So <laughs> it's like, Here's the thing. like As a comedian, I can see stopping. I've played to the bartender in bands before. Yeah. Like I've just been up there and like, you know, when you're a shit nothing band, you have you know like nobody's gonna go and see you, or like like you you burn through your friends and maybe it's like on a Thursday night, you know, and it's just like your friends can't make it to that one, and it's, and you know the other bands also don't draw, so there's like the other bands and the bartender, and if you're playing last that night, you're playing with <laughs> the bartender. Dude, <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny because you still like play because it's fun. Fuck yeah. it. I've known you for what like five years at this point, mm-hmm. and I, I I've been. St- Pretty because the Navy can find close to you, and I feel like I, I have a good grasp of you. But I I had to go look for your your uh, Facebook history mm-hmm. to find that photo of like your your uh, dick pic. Oh yeah, and, oh yeah, oh yeah, the second last podcast. Yeah. And, and um, what was funny about it is like I saw this life of you before the Navy. I was so happy, wasn't and I? It was, it, <laughs> <laughs> it was really weird. Like I was seeing into this like world beyond like what I know of you, and I was like. I don't know this guy completely. Really? And, yeah. What was there that like intrigued you? Smiles. Okay. <laughs> but no, there there was a certain uh, energy from uh, your your drumming days, mm-hmm. and, and I know you still do it to a certain extent, but not to what you used to not do. Nearly, yeah, not nearly. And, and it was just interesting because like it, it's not that you're a different person, but it's a part of your life that you know you're not totally anymore. And I was like, man, I wonder what it'd be like to talk to that end right. Uh, and, and I'm he sure was, he was a ridiculous human being. But <laughs> and I, I there was some like there was the smiles I've seen of you, and there was some like crazy smiles and like <laughs> and and then you know I'm I'm not gonna say we're soulless people, but I saw some general happiness in some there of the was, photos. There was, and I was like, good. damn, look, there's a guy who was like living a life who like he didn't give a fuck about like where he was living, what he was doing. He was just happy because he was around good people doing something that he loved. I mean, I generally lived in like. It's weird. It's like it's like some people end up living in. I've heard about your your flop house days. Like I lived my my first couple apartments. They were similar to that, but everybody was like responsible people that had jobs. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> so there was like constantly a dozen people at my house, 
every day. Maybe not that much. It was probably like constantly, constantly like like six people over at any given time, plus the people that live there and all that stuff. And like just you know a lot. Of, and we would always be like either before we go to the bar or before we even did because I really didn't go to the bar until later. Uh, like we would just be at the coffee house or the or the pancake house and like Denny's or whatever and just like till like five in the morning talking about who goddamn knows what. I was it was great. It was the it was the early two thousands and you know everybody was innocent and nobody had you know nobody had to care until the economic collapse and, <laughs> and, then, we, and then everything got fucked. Yeah. What I would say about it is is not in a in a a negative light because I don't I'm saying like everything's terrible for you now because no I, I, I love my life right there's now. There's benefits and yeah. cons, but. It it was I I was peeking into the era where you were I guess finding yourself. That's a really mm-hmm. shitty thing I know, but like I, I looked into it and I was like, man, here's like the moment where like he was kind of really like kind of like looking through life, seeing what it's all about, meeting different people, mm-hmm. and I was like, I look at those pictures and I look at you now, and it's like I look at you now and it's like, oh, he's an adult now. <laughs> he's like. He's, he's a gross he just, boy. He just looks boring and sad now. Because I, I see a lot of people like, oh man, Henry looks really young, and I was like, oh no, you should look at these photos. Like, yeah, you, you can totally like a, you look like a child. You can see the child in him, and yeah. it it was weird because I was kind of like trying to like look into that and just do these photos, and it's like, what the fuck am I doing? I feel like you're you're like eulogizing me right now. <laughs> we gather here today to pay our respects. He was, to he was Jim such a great childhood. he was such a great child. So Jim, the gym before he was dead. Say, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not Back a when he was way. dating before the divorce. Oh and my god! <laughs> it, no man, I love her. And um, I just enrolled in college again for the fifth time in my life. Congratulations! <laughs> Not even joking on yeah. that. Um, but this time I actually have a plan to to finish. I am uh, financially stable enough to complete. Um, I, they, I'm going to show up and they're going to be like, here, just take your fucking associates. You're done with it anyway. I could just never go long enough to actually complete it. So I have to, I have to go to this one school basically long enough to get residency and then they'll give me that degree. Is, um, are you doing the association to lock it so you can get the degree wherever you want? So I can go, yeah, so I can get the bachelor's degree. Cause you don't, so you don't have to do the bullshit. So yeah, it gets, gets, clears out the bullshit. <laughs> and hard cut. <laughs> So, technical difficulties. I'm going to put this in to bleep in there. Wait. I know you love it when we clap. <laughs> so much <it's> happening. <laughs> and go. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Uh, things happened. It's going to now go to a screen where you will not see our faces, but you'll hear our audio of great things. When I, when I get out, I'm going to... Go to school and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be an art major. I'm gonna be an art major, ma. I ain't gonna make no goddamn money. <laughs> um, I, I and <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> and not to backtrack too much, I think what I, I learned and from hearing his stories and looking at your photos, it, it's really weird that like the different amount of lifetimes you can live in one lifetime. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. And and it's and not even that like, like, you've been in the Navy for five years. Yes. How long does this time this five years has it felt? Fucking forever. Uh, no, I will disagree with you because yeah. in the moments, and I, we'll, we'll both mm-hmm. agree, in moments it feels like it was forever. Mm-hmm. But as we've gotten through some of the harder points, looking back, I was like, it's almost just a flip. I, I mean, it feels like it feels like both, but like at the same, as long as I think the secret is, as long as you continually give yourself <clears throat> new experiences and new things to do, then then your life feels like a, like it's full of... I mean, I guess that's not a fucking profound thing to say, right? right? But, like, as long as you keep doing new things, like, you feel like you're like you're doing, you know, like you... I don't know. Like, like your time is well spent. Um, and I, I, it seems you disagree, but I think you'd agree with me. It, we are kind of getting past this point in our life, and the hardest part of it's yeah. already gone. Yeah. Uh, it's just finishing the finishing short news finishing, so, I can, so I can move on. We're, 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 we're finishing this marathon, mm-hmm. and, and I can already feel like the farther I get away from it, it, it really is almost seeming like just a, a, a moment, a blip. And the farther I will at some point become like that seemed like a second of my life. But then again, mm-hmm. do you like 2012 seems so long ago to me? It does, it's, especially such a long time ago. especially when I consider like because I mean, I the, the whole like I've lived multiple lives thing didn't stop when I signed up. I mean, so yeah, I, so, so so like I, who I was in 2012, <clears throat> vastly different human being from who I am now. But you know? so I, I look at it a little differently. So me and him have a similar friend, uh, Frost. Mm-hmm. Um, I and, miss that fucking kid. And, and I feel like the amount of time I got to spend with him now is so short 
in the grand scheme of what I'm doing. And maybe I will cross paths with him again, mm. but if that's all I ever got, like that was such a minimum amount of time to like be around a cool person. Mm. Um, and he had a lot of good perspectives and I really enjoyed his company. And it's like, wow, I, it's like barely if, if anything. If it makes you feel any better, I just I just talked to him on the phone uh, last weekend. Yeah. And uh, I, I, the time I saw him before that was, was about, I would say six months ago when he I came, was there when he came to visit. So I, remember when he came yeah. to visit, he was talking about, oh, I, I got my my uh, 2008 GTI. I'm gonna like get it to stage three. I'm gonna make it all fast. Bye, 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 bye. Remember I was talking about all that. Yeah. Talked to him on the phone last week. Yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna stage three the GTI. <laughs> <laughs> Same conversation. So Frost hasn't changed. He is a constant in your life. You'll you'll yeah. call him 20 years from now. I'm gonna get the the, the GTI to stage three. It's gonna be so good. And I, I that's think, why I love that boy. He's I think everybody, everybody needs a person like that. Oh, he's you know, just a, to anchor them. He is just like he is just like a Labrador retriever of a human being. But, just always happy and willing to hang out. But he's like super. He's like a super intelligent. Oh yeah. yeah. Also like a Labrador retriever. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so so speaking of of that friend in your life, that special someone that mm-hmm. uh, is a is a constant and hasn't changed. Uh, my special friend actually uh, did oh, change. Thanks, buddy. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. It's not you. <laughs> my special friend. That sounds like you guys like had a moment. By, in the, by the way, together. quick quick aside. Every time we're in the car, <laughs> this guy makes me start screaming like George Costanza. Like eventually, like like he just keeps like farting. Feed me and feed me and feed me. Was like, ah! I was in the pool. I was in the pool. So, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's happened on every trip. Uh, so anyway, this is so easy. Yeah, my 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 one of my best friends in the whole world. This guy, uh, I'll just say his first name. This guy named Max. He's a huge fat Samoan dude. He's got this great big bushy beard. He's getting married soon. Congratulations, by the way, because I know you're not going to see this, but I don't care. He is now making his own ammunition. It's a bit of a gun nut. Makes his <laughs> oh, own ammunition. Me Gun, that. Yeah, guns are fun. Yeah, he is making. Oh. <laughs> Oop, we're going to wrap it up? Okay, do I have time for the... Okay, so anyways, he's making these things called varmint grenades. Look it up, kids. It vaporizes squirrels. I'm not kidding. They just... They're gone. Varmint grenades. It's a special... Is this a, wait, are you are you plugging his product? No! Right I'm not plugging his did product. He, he, he bought this separately. Did he you under the table no. for no. space? No, you, 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 can, you can only buy... You can only buy the bullets. If you want to var- uh, vaporize <laughs> the varmints that, in your yard... Varmint grenades! Max, if you're paying for this shit, at least give us some varmint grenades. What the fuck? <laughs> I want to play with them. But no, so like he's sitting there making bullets and I was like, what are these? They're varmint grenades. What are those? And he shows me a video and it's like literally just fucking like gophers just... Disappearing. That just sounds horrible. You can't even eat it at that point. I, but, you know, they're gone. I guess if you wanted them gone. And so this podcast will be uh, <laughs> vaporizing <laughs> varmints. Vaporizing <laughs> varmints. <laughs> vaporizing varmints. Uh, is it? Is it still got time? The screen's black, so I think the battery might have died. Oh. So like, no, not the varmint grenade story. And now it's bad. Yay! If you want to finish your varmint grenades. Uh, Technical I mean, you know, difficulties. I, I feel like while the while the the varmint grenades do travel at a very high rate of speed, the 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 momentum on this story is has gone. slowed down <laughs> just a bit. But no, definitely, I, you know, it, it's it's you know a little NSFW, so you know don't like like look at it. And Wait, tackle you're it telling your me that like, when when. Tiny critters get vaporized into a pink mist. That's not safe for work. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe don't let your boss or your parents. And that's it for this podcast. Thanks for joining us.